Boom. We're in. We'll let a few people join in. So real quick, what this will be, this is a B17 slash ham tag update. Um, it's Father's Day. Um, and I'll probably only run for roughly 30 minutes, but we'll see how many people come in. This was unscheduled, unannounced, but I figured an update was due because it appears so far I will be back to a normal schedule with the day job. Since the day job schedules back to normal, that will allow me, once I get caught up, to get back to normal with ham tag light. Hello, Judd, bringing Judd back in. Um, and we're even going to try to get Judd on set for uh, a series. Although Judd and I both like doing the live thing where he's just coming live from his house. So that might be continual as well. Um, let's see. And the third mission for B-17 is going to kick off. I'm hoping I can get it done later today, Father's Day. We'll see. There's family coming over. Let me see. Let me get this off screen so you're not seeing that. And then you can see I rewarded myself with a Black Series Mando. Hello. So he's going to be hanging out today on set. We got some coffee. We're going to talk about these in a second. And I also rewarded myself with some scotch from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. This one is Spice the Main Brace, and it's 16 uh -huh. years old. So let's see. Can we see? There's no commenters in. There's four people watching, and we're looking good. Let's see. You can see all the uh, – man, I haven't even fixed up my set very nice. Look at that. You can see my other tripod back there. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'm going to wait a little bit before we get into some of the game stuff. Let me tell you, I also – I love to read, so I picked up uh, Black Thursday, which is the Schweinfurt. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, and I believe it is, yep, Schweinfurt. The Schweinfurt raid, which was brutal for the, uh, the bomber boys going into action. So I've been wanting to read that for a while, and I thought, you know what? I've got a week off coming up soon. I'll get in some read time of that as well. Lucas Dan is in. Hey, Bart, good to see you. Good to see you, uh, Reichmeister. Rashmeister, greetings from Sweden. Well, greetings. Greetings to you. All right, well, let's uh, kick in. So um, I'm finishing up editing. I was almost done with uh, Agents of Mayhem from Academy Games when everything kicked off and it froze up all my work. But that editing will get done soon. And... Austerlitz 1805, oh, terrible glare, wow, and shading, there we go, is going to be hitting my table soon. <clears throat> Still in the box right now. Um, I've done a an unboxing, but this will be on the table getting some playtime as I get some time off. Beautiful, austere cover. I just love that. That fog was crucial, and you can just see that tree in there. So... This is a game from Spain. I talked to Jose. He knows I've done an unboxing. He knows there was a printing error on the rule book. I believe it says 1815. <laughs> One of the old files got recirculated in. Obviously, they'll be fixing that. It is Austerlitz 1805, and they know that. So that will be a full review. will come on that soon. Um, but in the meantime, my very next thing will be going into mission three of B-17. I cannot wait. Ham Taggery is the name of our bomber. Um, I've picked up 12 new subscribers, so they will become, uh, along with the other 10, uh, crew members that will replace those that are wounded or killed. Hopefully not. Guaranteed in B-17, Queen of the Skies. Um, they'll be filling in as uh, missions continue. And... Uh, like an impromptu, almost think of it like a Kickstarter stretch goal. I had decided, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I decided that if I picked up 10 new subscribers, Ham Taggery, which is me, the plane, let me clear my 
<clears throat> better, will get a free reroll. So I can use it. I can't use it for individual crew. That keeps me from, well, we know Andrew died. My, I lost a navigator. I can't come in and just save a crew member. It's got to be plain specific catastrophe. So if you've ever played B-17 Queen of the Skies, what that would probably be is a strike to the bomb bay with the bombs still on board. I could see myself saying, you know what? We're going to re-roll that. Bomb bay is not getting hit. Or at least we'll re-roll the chance that it's not getting hit. Or I could see that mission one, we almost lost Ham Taggery right there. Uh, when uh, the wings took the devastating number 10 die roll, which is to the fuel tanks, and then you either have a, uh, a self-seal, a leak, or a catastrophic explosion. And I could see re-rolling that as well. I'm going to keep those re-rolls, or at least that one. It might just be that one extremely limited because you've got to have the risk of catastrophe in the game, in my opinion, to keep it fun and that tension rolling in. But I'll have at least one re-roll. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I may come up with some other things. But, oh, and when I re-roll it, it's going to force me to roll on the random events chart as well. That can be both good and bad. So that'll keep things lively. And you don't roll on the random events chart in B-17 too often. So um, let's see. James, uh, Brazil, hello. We'll listen later. Visiting family. You know what? I'm about to visit family too, so I totally, totally get it. Uh, Dan, nice cover on Austerlitz, 1805. I agree. I love the austere choice um, by uh, Trafalgar Edition Games. Uh, sorry, Trafalgar Editions, not games. That's not in there, Trafalgar Editions. So uh, that is what is planned board gaming-wise. Let's see, I've been uh, with some time off. I didn't want to do much, and I just started re-watching Mandalorian. I watched the series, but I wanted to re-watch it, and I love how they're putting out the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, the one on the volume on how they're using all these LCD screens top and around and how it places the actors right in the environment, that's really cool. I think it's going to be huge for Star Wars and allow them to make it appear like they're on set all over, well, the universe. So that's neat. Let's see. Uh, today is Father's Day. Thank you for those that are tuning in. I totally get when others can't. Family will be coming over here. Um, I am going to grill hamburgers for several family members coming over. Excuse me. Um, and then I'm going to go see my stepdad and mom. We're going to do a, it's supposed to be nice here. So we're doing a little outdoor. Uh, my stepdad's 87, diabetic, and just had some work done on his heart. So we're, we're definitely maintaining social distancing. Going to be meeting outside. and uh, But we don't want to miss that. So I'll be doing that as well. And then, depending on how family things go, I may sneak in a game of Boo, mission three, or at least get her going. The hard thing with this is once I start a mission, I have a real hard time pulling myself away. And uh, it may be a short milk run, which is great, but it could, you know, sometimes these games can go long too. And uh, with me being at work so much, um, the family's clinging a little bit, which is good, which is good. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. Uh, the other thing just... <laughs> housekeeping for me is with me working 12, 14 hour days, uh, there was a lot of stuff I had to catch up on home maintenance wise. I got an electrician coming out Monday. So, um, the good news is guaranteed no matter what I've, uh, I've got July 4th weekend off and some days on either side, a whole week actually. So while I've got some outdoor projects planned, I'm going to be definitely catching up on, I'm hoping to even maybe get a couple missions of B-17 done because I'm, I'm, I was like jonesing for some B-17. I can't wait to get in there and get Hamtaggery flying. And I know I've been radio silent kind of for a while. 
I did get the uh, domination preview out for Phalanx. That actually, uh, that Kickstarter starts today. Wei Ching Ching is the designer tai, uh, from Taiwan. And uh, it's a very interesting, different take on, well, World War II in 90 minutes. Um, the map was at first kind of off-putting to me. I remember when I opened it up, I was like, what the heck? What is this? And then it grew on me a little bit. And they're going to do some refinements. They've already come out and said they're going to add the names of the different countries. I mean, some are easy. Hey, there's Germany. But there'll be other ones. They'll be like, what is that that I'm moving to over there? And they're going to fix that. So, of course, it's a uh, pre-production uh, game that I got. That's why I only do a preview on it. It's unpaid. Uh, but I put that out already. And that Kickstarter goes live today. So you'll probably see some of that. Uh, Cliff, shalom from Jerusalem. Shalom. Very nice. Uh, Dan Lucas, the map was a trip. Yeah, it was. Um, and that's, I'm going to tell you, I, I really like when I'm seeing, well, when I'm seeing, I like designers coming from all over the world. Um, you know, you've got this Japanese designer trend where it's these small, like micro games. Love that. That's where Love Letter comes in, if you've seen that. And you would think, what is it, like 16 cards? And you're like, how could this even be fun? It's so minimalistic. And then it's really, really fun. Kind of hard to get a bunch of war gamers to sit around and play Love Letter. <laughs> but, of course, they retheme the heck out of it. I think the Batman one is, is cool. I've only got the Love Letter. But, man, I had a bunch of cops, and I brought that out once at this convention. And they were like, what is that? <laughs> that was fun. Uh, let's see. Ooh, just still kind of catching my breath too. So, uh, uh, we started our whiskey stuff back up that, that, uh, we got that going again. Cause that was a hiatus from that as well. So that was interesting. I'll speak on that since we're in here. So the Scotch malt whiskey society is pretty cool. Um, now we've got flown over to Ireland to Waterford uh, to review the Waterford distillery or review to kind of, well, we got introduced to everything they were doing and hung out with one of their farmers and all this stuff. And then we popped over to Scotland last in 2019. And, uh, in Scotland, they have a lot of what they call independent bottlers, independent bottlers. Uh, what they do is, and Scotch malt whiskey society is an independent bottler. They will go buy cast from like hundreds of different distilleries, and then they do their own thing, maybe age it a little longer, maybe recask it in a sherry cask or whatever. And uh, then they'll put it out at cask strength. Cask strength means they don't dilute it with water when it comes out of the barrel. Uh, they don't add any colorant. Uh, they don't, um, you know, they don't muck with the juice. So, uh, makes them a lot more expensive uh -huh. and they've become so popular that, uh, sometimes it's hard to get a bottle and these guys do, they must be gamers at heart because, or, or at least very creative titlers, they come up with the coolest titles ever. So spice the main brace. So you've got a whole sailing thing going on there. They had one I couldn't get a hold of. It was called happiness is a warm bung. <laughs> now a bung being the, uh, it's like a giant cork that seals up the barrel. <laughs> so I actually called asking, Hey, I tried that happiness is a warm bung. And I thought it was happiness was a warm bung hole. <laughs> no, uh, of course the hole being the opening, but uh, they said it's actually, they laughed. It was a gal. She's awesome. She goes, actually, it's a uh, minus just bung. Just happiness is a warm bung. And that was a, uh, I think an Oloroso finished barrel. Gosh, it was good. But it sold out so fast that I missed it. So that's what this is here. And what I like to do is when I'm playing this, I will pour myself something. So I'm going to pour myself this one when I get a chance to go play Mission 3. Ooh, all right, we're at 14, just coming up on 15 minutes, 13 eyeballs. Obviously, a lot of folks will come in and watch this later. Um, let's talk about ham tag again, since I kind of touched on it when this first started. Um, 
Uh, Judd and I had planned to take a break. We'd finished our decade series, and we were going to take one week off, one Saturday off, uh, which actually ends up being two Saturdays because it's the original show, and then it's the fans listing afterward. So that was going to give me two weeks anyway, and then all heck broke loose. So not only was that break built in, uh, well, maybe it would only been one week break because I think we we're just going to start it following. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking, two week break. But we had to hold off on that because I literally was not here. So uh, we will start that back up. I got to get with Judd. I would love to start Hamtag this next Saturday. Uh, I haven't confirmed that with him yet, so let me hold on that for now. But, um, well, whenever I decide to do it, it'll be scheduled. I'll try to schedule it days in advance so you can see it, and then Judd will put something up in the War Game forum as well. Hopefully, that'll come soon. Dave is in. Hi, Chief and all. Yeah, hey. Um, but we're going to get that in. What we're doing is doing our top five uh, publishers, and our very first one will be GMT. So we're going to bounce from publisher to publisher. Then the following week, we will do the fans listing, which is fun. Again, that'll be live. And then we'll move to a, a, the next publisher that we have. And we were talking about it. We think we can do five to six different publishers. There's some that, you know, I, a couple publishers, I only have one or two. Obviously, you can't do a list of five if I only have two of their games. Um, but we'll, we'll work that in and, and play with that as we move on. And we got a little caveat too. We're going to do not only our top five, but we're going to try to remember and list our first game from that publisher. So obviously it may not be in the top five and the most recent one that we've purchased from that publisher or received from that publisher. Um, so that is what we'll be moving into ham tag wise. And uh, we're probably still going to stay live with those. Uh, Judd said it's just so much more convenient for him. He's not having to drive out here. It's about probably about a 30-minute drive for him, but you're getting all the game boxes ready, and then you got to get over here, and then we're filming. And then when he does come on set, we'll try to film two at least, sometimes three. So you got a lot of pre-planning ahead. Then we're shooting, changing shirts, all the stuff. Now, I like the quality. We can get 1080p when he's on set. That's the camera I use over there, and it's a very nice camera. When we do these lives currently uh, with StreamYard, um, you can only get up to um, 780 so or 720p. Hello. So, um, which isn't bad, and it works. And our sound, I think, is pretty good with our mics and everything going on. But we'll see. We're going to play with that a little bit. So uh, let's see. Nathaniel, how redacted will Judd's list be? How redacted? Um, I don't know. I guess. Uh, are you meaning he's going to want to do more than five? So ask, clarify that a little bit, although it'll be up to Judd. I don't know what Judd will do on there. So. Oh, 18 minutes. Like I said, I'll keep this at 30. If there's any other general questions coming in, um, if anybody saw my different hats video that kind of uh, let everybody know, hey, not going to be doing films for a while. And I did. So Miss Overton is the gal whose hat I put on um, in the big picture I showed. Miss Mary is a, a different HOA president that, uh, again, made me a sweet potato pie. She just made me a new one. My life, wife, my life, my wife loves her sweet potato pie, and so do I. And uh, it was just, what was it, Friday. She was like, hey, I got, I got some more pies. You better come by. So I did, and we hung out for a while. Uh, she's been one of our neighborhood uh, association presidents for a very long time. So I've known her for years. Uh, let's see how many of Judd's first choices will be out of bounds because, Oh, the hall of fame. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, I think he's got three, three games on his hall of fame. So obviously those won't come in. 
So I bet you he may mention some of them as his first purchase. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, who knows what his very first purchase was. I've got to remember like GMT. I don't recall my first purchase. It might be, it might be Apache Thunderbolt. I'm forgetting the full name of the, the whole Dan version version. Is that it? Um, it might be that, but I'll have to look back and see. We'll see that that might be a sneak peek, but again, I haven't even looked. I got to go in and look because I have most of them on the shelf, but some of them I don't have on the shelf and my shelf has been bursting lately. So I've been pulling some games off that I realize I'm not going to play them. And I've been just either putting them up on eBay or getting ready to put them up on eBay. I really need to thin down my collection. I believe, well, <laughs> I've got tons of shelf over here. My rule is it's going to, it must fit on that shelf. And I've recently been going on, uh, I've got tons of Kinesia games. And I wanted to organize my shelf with Kinesia having a section. I already have Martin Wallace has a section GMT has a section kind of, so does my uh, Victory Games and Avalon Hill and my TSRs. So it's either going to be by publisher or by designer. Quite honestly, the only two designers I have in their own section is Martin Wallace and Kinesia. I love Kinesia games. And then over here, I have kind of what I consider my hot game shelf. That's where all my Academy games are. And uh, then some stuff from CMON. A lot of stuff from Simon. My boy loves zombie sides. So do I. So we do a lot of that. It's funny. My son, Bo, who actually got with me and said that he would like to run one of the missions for B-17. I was like, yes. Yeah. So one of the probably maybe mission four or five, which will be one of our last milk runs before we move on to the, the more distant targets. He may get in and run one of those. We'll see. I'll walk him through it. Um, which was great because he played this once with me and he was like, mm, it's okay. But he leans, he told me toward role playing over board games, but he likes when they, the two kind of mix, which is this does, although he's not into world war two at all. Um, so, but getting him involved just so he doesn't know, I look forward to that. I love that actually. So, um, I didn't think he was going to want to do it at all. And then he said, hey, Dad, I might want to do one of those, and we can film it. I'm like, sounds great. Uh, Trevor, hey, Chief, miss you, buddy. Yeah, well, we're back, man. We're back. We're going to, as long as Judd's good for next Saturday. Oh, um, I'm working on, I won't release it yet because I don't have a firm date yet. Um, but I'm working on another designer interview as well. So a lot of folks don't tune into those, but a lot do. So, uh, Mark Herman was fun. Uh, Eric, uh, Lee Smith was awesome. Loved his stuff. Uh, when I was a kid, you know who I need to get a hold of and I haven't even reached out and I'm forgetting his name even because it's on the back of the box. I think is, uh, the designer B 17. And I don't know why I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head. Somebody throw it in the comments. I'm sure, you know, I need to have him on there as well. So let's see, uh, Uva Guten Tag. Ah, was ist los, Uwe? Was ist los? Um, Chief from Nano Rider, do you have Clash of the Gladiator by Kinesia? I do not. Clash of the Gladiators. Hmm. I love Gladiators too. Love, love Gladiators. Um, let's see. Cliff, my son and I love doing Cloud Spire co-op together. Cool. I love it. I mean, that's my whole, even my title for this whole channel bonding with board games. It was funny because I was talking with Tom when I was breaking away from the dice tower, just to do my own show. Um, he said, yeah, let me, let me put out some stuff so that we can send some, uh, dice tower folks your way. What's, what's going to be your, your channel's title. I said, bonding with board games. He said, do you want a tip? I said, of course. He said, that title's too long. I said, okay. I said, you know, I kicked around tons of different titles and, uh, I, 
you know, bonding with board games. I just love the idea that it's not just war game specific because I like, I like some crunchy euros. I like role playing games. And so I wanted to go for the bonding aspect. Now I definitely lean toward war games. It's my first thing into my first foray into gaming was all via war games. Uh, but I did a lot of family stuff as a kid. My folks loved playing cards uh, every reunion in Iowa, it was always card tables came out. We would play hearts and spades and, uh, oh heck, because my grandparents wouldn't allow any cursing. So you couldn't call that. Oh hell. <laughs> and the army played spades all the time. And then we played all the typical games like sorry and family feud. And I remember my folks even buying trivia pursuit. So I wanted to go with bonding with board games because I do believe it's the bonding that brings the folks together. And we, we run a lot of events. The whole downstairs was designed for gatherings of people, whether that's folks that want to come in and drink whiskey. Um, we'll, we'll have people that can sit down and enjoy whiskey or definitely for gaming. This set, converts over to there's a bunch of seating right there and this matches kind of like the island i have upstairs that you'll see in some early uh shows even on this channel and it's designed to handle four players right here and then i've got my table over there that i do a lot of my uh like detailed reviews there six person table with bench seating and another six person table with a leaf that comes off and that's just down here. Then upstairs, I can fit play. And then I've even got a designed um, coffee table that's open so you can sit under it and you can play a game there. We figured it out. We haven't quite hit this number, but we could easily handle 36 gamers in this house. Uh, that would be using both upstairs and down. Um, and I think we've gotten up to 18 here. On an event and uh but we want to get it where it keeps going so that's our goal covid slowed that down uh we had a we had an event scheduled and i want to do uh Kinesia night where uh, me and one of my uh, officers that works with me who's a big board gamer we're just going to have a ton of folks over and get a bunch of it'll be all Kinesia games and uh, we'll be teaching them and getting folks going on different reiner Kinesia games so Nano Rider, he agrees. Uh, Nathaniel, the title's great. It gives a different orientation to the channel than other board game channels. Cool, thanks. It is a bit of a mouthful. Um, let's see. Can you uh, get Roger B. McGowan for an interview? I would love to. That would be great. I will continue working on it. Getting the interview set up, um, I almost had uh, Richard Berg. Um, but he did not have the tech. I, uh, had talked to Mark, did a great interview with Mark, Mark Herman. I want to have him back on. Um, and I, after the show, I said, Hey, you know, could you reach out to Richard? And he said, yeah, I think I could get him to do it. The problem is he doesn't have a camera. He doesn't have, uh, a real high speed connection. And he'd reached out to him and said, mm, he would be willing to do it, but just an audio may have worked better. And then he passed before I could even dig into that anymore. And that was sad because that's part of my deal was I wanted to capture uh, interviews um, with folks of their games I played when I was even a kid. And so for me, that's kind of my little icing on the cake is that, you know, I get to know these folks and, and hopefully capture some of that history as well. Um, let's see, uh, Uva, uh, what, oh, sorry. Uh, FPG is good. John, uh, he chief, very jealous of those, uh, that live close. Oh, that live close to you. Um, yep. Hey, if you're ever in the Wichita, Kansas area and I'm off, come on by the house. You know, Tom, Tom Basil used to do that too. Say if anybody was down in, uh, he lives South of Miami and forgetting Homestead, I think. And he would say, stop by. Um, so if anybody does, we'll do board games and I'm usually letting people taste whiskey as well. Board games and whiskey are meant to be shared. That is a true fact. 
Not that I don't like solitaire games and not that I won't sit quietly and sip a whiskey by myself, but uh, they're so much better shared. Uh, let's see, Uva, I made a free mod for Ford on Table Simulator. Ooh, okay, the Gladiators. That's what that was. Tom Vezlo's very good review of Clash of the Gladiators. That's why I got it. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, You know, uh, my favorite Gladiator game, and I'm forgetting the full name of it, I'm looking at it, was by, um, oh my gosh, Jim from, who did Title Bout. How am I forgetting his name? Man, I woke up, had my coffee, and it's not kicking in yet. I designed Title Bout, and... Uh, I ordered this gunslinger game that he's done too, but it's in a real rough state. And, uh, and then, uh, his gladiator game was great. Uses cards like title bout and, and the cards kind of drive everything. You look at different spots on the cards. The good thing is title bout kind of plays itself. The gladiator game quest for the rudest just came to me. Jim Trunzo. Woo. It all is coming back. Look at that. Look at that. The brain's old, but it's slowly working itself out. Um, the Your movement and uh, style of play is then what, then you flip in the cards to find out if you're hit, you know, struck and where. So that's where that is great. A lot of people had trouble with the rule book. And I'm, it could have been better, but I didn't have any problems with it. But I don't know. I've, I've read so many Avalon Hill rule books and stuff that, um, I do like the new style of rule books. Uh, actually, I will tell you, Academy Games I think puts out the best rule books, uh, at least my style that I've seen. Uh, let's see. So true, whiskey and board games. Nano Rider four twenty six. Yes. Do you have any plans to participate in the BGG DT virtual convention? Um, no, not opposed to it or anything. But um, you know, I haven't even been able to make conventions lately. So, uh, we'll see. I saw the press releases on that, but I was so much in the midst of work that I didn't even read anything on it. Uva tabletop mod for the Armageddon war. She flying pig games, uh, Mark Walker. Got it. Okay. Let's see. What are we at? Oh yeah. Hold on. Dan Lucas. You should have butter, uh, Butterworth. I think it's Butterfield, isn't it? On the show. Or maybe Aunt Jemima. <laughs> well, that's gone. You can't get that bottle anymore. Uh, that was my favorite syrup as a kid, too. I love the glass bottle. But, hey, when you get old, things change. Uh, there haven't been any conventions lately. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Butterfield. John Butterfield. Uh, Co-designer with Eric Lee Smith. And there was one other individual later with Ambush. I would love to have... Uh, john on there um so we'll see i'm slowly like i'll reach out to folks and then see and when then we'll get it worked out um the live interview shows take it's almost like that that's where i wish i had a producer that was doing all that and getting all that lined out and just saying hey it's this saturday but that's cool the cool thing about all this is um you know it's it's still a secondary hobby gig which is great and just getting designers on and hearing their thoughts and getting to meet them virtually and then get them introduced. I really think, um, you know, it's kind of there. Kinesia designers in my mind are totally like authors. You know, I don't like everything Kinesia put out, but, um, I don't like every Stephen King book either, but there's several that I love. Um, and I feel it's totally that same thing um so anything i can do to help designers out great but yeah i'm trying to connect with a lot of the designers that i knew as a kid or that have a long history and just get them out there or they're currently you know they're doing a lot of projects and stuff like having greg smith on was just a blast and then his military background and mine um, let's see, let's see. Uva Origins Online was canceled one week before it opened. Maybe Gen Con Online will happen. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'll have to look into that. I saw they were doing all this online stuff, but then I didn't know stuff was getting canceled or anything. Uh, Nano Rider. Oh, Butterfield. I love Voyage of the BSM Pandora. You know, I was trying to get a hold of that at one point in time, and uh, 
I can't remember. I might have acquired it or not. That's the problem with my collection. I have to go look on BGG. I usually get them listed when I get them bought because I heard that was a great solo game as well. Uh, what about a designer named Walker? Yeah. Yeah, he would be good. You know, he does a lot of his own stuff. He's writing for several different uh, like magazines and stuff. I think he even has his own show. I haven't played as many of his games. I will say that. He works for Flying Pig Games. Well, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. We'll see. Um, yeah, Mark Walker is who I was thinking of. I thought he... Oh, shoot. What's the name of his company? He has his own company, doesn't he? He used to write for um, a magazine. I can't remember. He owns uh, FPG, used to own Lock and Load Publishing. That's what I was thinking of, Lock and Load stuff. Yep. See, I'm, I don't know. I haven't played as much of his stuff. I would love to interview everybody. So it's just a matter of time and, and who I'm getting a hold of and who I can't. Oh, Flying Pig Games. I never call it FPG. Makes sense. Flying Pig Games. Good. Oh, boy, where are we at? 36 minutes, 28 folks on. Um, let's do some Q&A if anybody has any questions, and then we'll uh, close her down. Speaking of Uva, you should have Uva and his son from Academy Games on. That's Gunta. Gunta. Yeah, I've had Uva on multiple times. Uh, Uva and I um, are buddies. He likes uh, good whiskey. Uh, boy, is he a renaissance man. I think he plays the violin. Um, he goes to, he's a hunter. I mean, he was, he was, can't remember. He might've just been, can't remember if he posted or not. If he just let me know, but like in his area, I think, I think it's Ohio. Like if a deer gets hit, he gets a call from the state troopers and he'll come get it because <laughs> he's his hunter. And then he just, preserves and saves the meat. I was like, wow, I can't do all that man stuff. <laughs> oh, let's see. How's Father's Day? Good so far. I can hear some some families getting up, up there. Speaking of Uva, you should have, oh, sorry. Walker created a game called 65, Squad Combat in Vietnam. I think I've seen that. Nano Rider, he had a Kickstarter last week, Old School Tactical Volume 2 reprint. Trevor Just and Uva gets uh, in bag fights too. I don't know what that is. Uh, bar fights. <laughs> I was like, what's a bag fight? I'm, I'm way out of the deal. I did not know he'd gotten in a bar fight. I bet you Uva is like probably like a, a martial arts expert as well. He just looks dangerous. Eichert that is. Uh, let's see. Vorpal Chief. What is your opinion on a game called War Room? It costs hundreds of dollars. I have not played it, nor do I know anything about War Room. I will tell you if it costs hundreds of dollars, it's kind of like whiskey. You can get great whiskey, bourbon, Elijah Craig for 30 bucks. Uh, however, people want to go around and look for you know $400 bottles of bourbon. And I'm like, you're not getting value of 400 unless you plan on holding the bottle and selling it later. So any game that's that expensive, I would tell you there are plenty of games out there that are phenomenal for 50 bucks. Uh, fighting while you're in the bag. Yeah, that would be interesting. Dan, uh, two chits enter the bag. One chit leaves. I like it. There is that bag drawing mechanic, chit drawing. I like that. I think you hit on something there, Dan. <laughs> All right, we're getting close. I'll shut this down so it doesn't ramble on too far. Um, can't wait for some more uh, Mandalorian to come out. I think the TV Disney Plus way of doing Star Wars is the way to go. I want long form. Um, Band of Brothers, you saw that worked out. Uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, anything that can just utilize a long connected story, that's where TV's moving. And in my opinion, it makes things better than the movies. Because although the way Disney did the superhero stuff was a very interesting way to make that long form. Very risky for them, though. Um, 
So I don't know. I like that behind the scenes, the vo the volume though, because that allows uh, them to make a show that feels epic at a much more affordable cost. Good song, Ramble On. War Room is supposed to be the greatest advanced version of Axis and Allies by the same designer. All right. He better bring the price point down. Uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly like Game of Thrones. You can weave this, this story. Uh, Game of Thrones, I've only made it up to season three because a buddy loaned me everything. And then I was like, I need to buy these. Uh, and the way they were able to make you hate a character and then the very, you know, three episodes later, you understand why a character is that way. That was fabulous. Westworld, I hear it's great. Haven't watched it. Sons of Anarchy, haven't watched it. Heard it was good. Um, let's see. Yep, Band of Brothers, anyone? Everybody mentions Band of Brothers but never remember Pacific. You know, Pacific was so hard to watch. and. Uh, it's interesting because I used to talk to a lot of veterans. They're all passing away now, but they felt that the European theater got all the glitz and the glamour and uh, the Pacific theater not. And they also felt like the Pacific theater just to live was so much harder. And I would agree the isolation, the rain, the heat, um, you know, not that freezing your, your butt off in Bastogne was good, um, but from a medic standpoint, um, patients shot and that get hypothermic can be saved and they don't go septic and all the stuff I learned when I was a medic in the army about when you're in that, that jungle environment, that if you can't get guys off the battlefield quick, you'll lose them just from sepsis. Ugh. So, I mean, even the guy that, what the guy that commits suicide and it's raining for 40 days straight and the Pacific was just hard to watch. And they have to cobble different stories together because the island hopping doesn't lend to following a team across. And you were focused on the enlisted men, whereas Band of Brothers was that cadre of senior NCOs and officers and the leadership of Winters that you see there. So that's why, uh, I don't know, they're getting ready um, to, they're supposed to release their eighth Air Force version, which is based off of a book, I think called the mighty eighth might be something else. I've read the book. It is fabulous. Um, and with the current tech out there, uh, it should be an amazing story as you follow bombers. Um, and boy, is that going to be fun? And I think it's going to bring a lot of people maybe back toward B 17 and some other gaming stuff too. So Pacific's brutal. Uh, I wouldn't want to have you know, I mean, if you're going to pick a theater, I'm just telling you the European theater I talked to, I dated a girl for a while and her grandfather ended up losing his leg due to a wound. He landed like five days after D-Day was wounded and then went back and got wounded again and lost his leg. But he said when he was, uh, at one point he was captured, the Germans bandaged him. One German spoke perfect English. He then told them, we're leaving you in this barn. They left them some food and they said, we're falling back. We're retreating. So we're going to leave you here and your people will find you. And that's exactly what happened. So you have this kinship, this civility, and boy, did things get nasty and brutish and evil, I think, by both Americans and Japanese and how they treated prisoners and all that kind of stuff. And ugh, brutal, brutal. And uh, so that, in my opinion, is some of the differences between the two. Let's see, JD, morning uh, one and all. War Room uh, is supposed to be the greatest. Oh, sorry, I read that. Uh, Trevor Just, good song. Vorpal, sorry, I backed up too far. Um, happy Father's Day from John. My light just did something weird there. Um, Vorpal Bite, only season three. There are better villains yet to come. I would imagine. Yeah, I need to get back into it. I want my wife to sit down. I need to buy the digital version and we'll just watch it all. Um, Negan from Walking Dead was about the most hated villain. Yeah, he was brutal. Mark, a documentary on the surge. Whoop, everything jumped on the surge uh, of the board game industry would be cool. Yes, it would. 
Nathaniel, Western Europe is an easier, more linear narrative than the Pacific due to the nature of combat. Yes, Vorpal, those officers and band of brothers were all authors years before the miniseries. Um, Vorpal, you think Western Front was bad. Eastern Front was the birthplace of brutality. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. I, as an American, you know, we'll tend to forget the Eastern Front. The Eastern Front was World War II in Europe. I mean, it is the main show. Everything else is a sideline. That's one thing I give uh, Academy Games credit for. Uh, Uva, you know, he puts out Awakening the Bear. He hasn't even done one on, on the Western theater yet. Hopefully we get the airborne guys someday soon, but, uh, yeah, I, ugh. you know, Stalingrad. Oh my God. So that's where they should go. A uh, band of brothers continue or not band of brothers, but if Spielberg, Spielberg and Hanks continue, man, if they somehow are able to, you know, they could do a whole one just on Stalingrad, but it would be nice if they could cover some units, maybe both sides, uh, as they go through the Eastern front, wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, well, the Soviets shot their own soldiers, right? Yeah. You know, move forward. If you come back, you'll be shot. That's a problem. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right. We're going to close it up. Greyhound looks amazing. Oh, that does look good. Speaking of Tom Hanks, the whole wolf pack thing, that looks pretty cool. That's one thing I'm really excited about is all this digital tech. And once the, once the, if these movies become the hits, I think they will. I believe you're going to have, you know, a lot of, especially with the greatest generation, the World War II movies, I think are just going to keep coming. And and if they're done with a level of accuracy, again, I almost don't like the movie format because they have to clip everything into something so tight, you know, um, you know, are they midway it, which I like midway. And, uh, I know you're looking at, uh, it's not quite how it looked, but I'm hoping that these world war II movies keep making a uh, big enough splash that you get stuff like Greyhound or you band of brothers is what I would really love to see. Um, let's see about crossing the North Atlantic, right? Um, Humphrey Bogart movie. Huh? Now that's interesting. I didn't know that. Love how you say wolf. Yeah. My, my co-host on the Scotch show makes fun of me all the time because it should be wolf, but I say wolf <laughs> and I can't drop it. It's kind of like how I say, I got to say it right now. I'm going to say cavalry cavalry. I always say Calvary, which is of course the hill, the mount that Jesus was on. Um, I'm a huge fan of Torpedo 8. I haven't seen that. Yeah, and sorry, Sean, for the way I pronounce. Uh, Vorpal, I once won a first place Origins event flying a TBF Avenger. Isn't that cool? All right, we're at 4821. 26 folks in some folks will watch this later. Thank you. One and all that's the updates. We've covered whiskey. We've covered B 17. We've covered, well, speaking of that, I'm going to be reading black Thursday. We've covered that. I'll be doing Austerlitz 1805, beautiful austere cover. And we've covered ham tag and the hopes that we'll get back into the regular schedule coming this Saturday. And well, I won't say who I haven't, uh, let's just say the designer that I've been talking to, his first name is Mike <laughs> and it's war, it's a war game designer. He is a war game designer. That's all the tip I'll give right there. Armored cav, exactly. Armored cavalry, cavalry, not armored cavalry. Exactly. I need to practice it. Armored calf. I even got a calf buddy. He gave me a glass. I can't find it now, but he was a, he was a calf scout. So I should be able to say it right. Uh, let's see. Uva, stay frosty out there, chief. Keep posting. Will do. Thanks for streaming. Says Nano Rider. Thank you. We're at 49, 43 guys. I'm going to sign out and ham taggery will be flying. Of course, I got to fly the mission and then I got to edit the, the mission. 
and I've been working on my uh, audio as well. I'm going with a lav mic, which should help with some of the audio. Got to get your audio right with what I'm doing there with those playthroughs. Last one, Vorpal. I am more into the air calf. I'm playing LZ X-Ray Vietnam. Very cool. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. So game it, you gamer gods. See ya. And I got to click properly now. See you guys later.